Good night, Papua New Guinea, and welcome to Sports Scene. I'm Godwin Eki. And I'm Elijah Levet. On the show tonight, we have the Hockey Olympic qualifiers for Oceania. We talk to Toya Whistle and Oceania football. We'll also have the Coca Cola Trivia Competition, Boxing and Rugby League. The Oceania Hockey Youth Olympic qualifiers was played last week at the Sejon Guy Stadium. The tournament kicked off on Wednesday and ended with the finals on Saturday. The Australian men's and women's team walked away with gold medals and qualifying for the Youth Olympic Games in Argentina. The hockey opening ceremony was held in the Sejongai's indoor complex on Tuesday. Participating teams from Australia, Vanuatu and host country PNG were greeted to a cultural welcome. Present at the opening ceremony was PNG Sports Foundation CEO Peter Samalili Jr. and Vice Sports Minister Wesley Raminai. The next few days is going to be a remarkable couple of days where I am sure there is going to be a lot of different perception about this beautiful nation on and off the field. In the Oceania region, the best team is going to represent us at the Olympics. And it won't be the Pacific, it will actually be the Oceania region. Usually you have only one team that normally qualifies from a tournament like this from uh, Oceania or Pacific, but I think it just shows that uh, your Oceania executives have worked so hard. I think they've been convincing enough to uh, make sure we have three, uh, three men's team and two women's team that qualify for it. For now, I'd like to officially open the Oceania under 18 youth Olympic qualifier. Day one of competition kicked off on Wednesday morning with rounds one and two. The first match in the men's division saw PNG take on Solomon Islands. PNG took the lead scoring two goals in the first two quarters while Solomon was still getting used to the turf. In the last quarter, Solomon Islands came back strong, managing to equalize right before full time. Final score, PNG two, Solomon Islands two. In the men's second match between Australia and Vanuatu, Vanuatu was thrown in the deep end from the first whistle. Fairly new to the sport, Vanuatu was unable to cope with the attack from the Australians. The match ended with Australia 17 points to Vanuatu nil. In round two, the PNG men's under-18 team lost their round two match against tournament favourites Australia. PNG went down fighting 21 points to two. Of course, we've been here since uh, Sunday and um, had some training in the lead up to the tournament here and uh, everyone's been very welcoming for us and uh, the hotel we're staying at is very nice and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to finishing off the tournament well. I think we, it's important that we, um, you know, we don't get too far ahead. There's some, been some, some good wins for us in the first two games, uh, but we need to continue that on uh, and if it's us that represent Oceania at the Youth Olympics, we'll, we'll do the best we can with that. My mom is a man who is a little bit of a man who is a little bit of a man who is a little bit of a On day two, the Aussies dominated again, with both the men's and women's teams having won all their matches. Round 5 was played on Friday. Australia remained unbeaten, dominating the competition for the past two days. Round 6 and the finals playoffs was held on Saturday. Australia men's and women's teams were the victors of this tournament, both walking away with gold medals, while for Papua New Guinea only the women's team secured bronze. And it's now time to announce our winners for Round 5 of the Coca-Cola Trivia which is um, Jonathan and Melissa Angu. The prize was picked up by Melissa at MTV Lay Office. Now for a chance to win Coca-Cola merchandise, all you have to do is answer these questions as we come down to this year's FIFA World Cup in July. Question number one, Edson Arentes do Nascimento is a former Brazilian footballer. What name does he popularly go by? And question number two, what position is current Brazilian footballer Neymar playing? And question number three, which two countries have won the World Cup back-to-back? -back? All you have to do is answer this on the MTV Facebook page for a chance to go into the draw.
Yes, and we've got more discussions coming up on the Under-18 Oceania Youth Olympic Qualifiers. You're watching Sports Scene. Stick around. Welcome back to the show. Now, still on hockey, the Oceania Hockey Youth Olympic Qualifiers was held last week with the finals on Saturday. We saw only four teams take part, four countries take part, which was Australia, Solomon Islands, uh, Vanuatu, and... Um, Solomon, Solomon Islands, Indian. Vanuatu, yes, Australia. and PNG, sorry. <laughs> yes, now this was the first time PNG hosted um, yeah. this tournament. And you could see, you know, um, Australia dominated that um, competition, you think? Yep. Well, I, that's right, uh, Elijah. Australia dominated both the men's and uh, women's events only because this is their game. They they started playing these events. Um, I asked one of the spectator who was also the parent of one of the players, the Australian players, and he, she said that um, her son started playing when he was seven years old. So they have the facilities available, the turf to play on, and so to them it's nothing. It's it's a piece of cake. Whereas uh, our Melanesian countries like Papua New Guinea, uh, Solomon Island and Vanuatu, we usually don't have the TERFs. But, um, you know, thank goodness we have our very own TERF uh, that was built for 2015 Pacific Games. And uh, that's where our players uh, played and, and used for their training. So Solomon Island and Vanuatu, they don't have the TERF like, uh, like we have in Port Moresby. So that was a bit of a, a downturn for them, but they did manage to to play um, good hockey yeah. um, during the competition. Now, I also spoke to the Australian coach and he was just telling me how, you know, they have this really good programs for the young hockey players. They started right at the junior level and yeah. they um, build their players up to, you know, the um, international standards and yeah. all that. And that's probably one thing that has helped them, you know, um, develop yeah, and win this tournament here. And so uh, they'll be representing Ocean at the Youth Olympic um, uh, Games. That's right. Yeah, so we'll have two men's and three women's uh, team to the Youth um, Olympic Games in Argentina in October later this year. So, but like, yeah, like you said, Australia will be pretty much representing the Oceania region because they are one of the toughest teams um, that competed during the event and obviously won uh, gold. What about our PNG team, the PNG men's and women's team? The women's team have qualified for, is that correct? The women's team, yes, they have qualified for, um, to go to Argentina, but the men's team have not qualified. There were only two spots available. It yeah. was taken by Australia. Um, so what can you say about the team, the PNG men's and women's team? Were, did, was there enough time for them to prepare or? Well, I guess it was obvious that uh, training and preparations for our men's and women's team, the under-18, wasn't really up to scratch because it was all done last minute. And preparations for the event, I guess, as well, you know, following the story since, um, since the beginning, there were a few, um, few setbacks and obviously speaking, financial issues was another thing and finding sponsors like it was last minute we had NCDC that came on board with 100,000 Kina sponsorship. So that's something um, the money they used to, to run this event. But um, like, like you said, you know, Australia, they started their junior players at a young age and then they, they make their way up. For us, I think it all comes down to how federations can, you know, run their competitions, whether it's a junior level or senior level. Um, our players, most of them are brought in from outside centres and we have to remember that they don't have turfs like what we have in Port Mosby to train and prepare themselves. They usually play on the grass. Um, so I think that's, a, that's something Oceania Hockey and PNG Hockey Federation needs to probably work on and, and develop our Oceania region, especially the Melanesian countries who are not at that level yet. Vanuatu um, <coughs> hockey is, a f is fairly new to them and the way they yeah. performed was, was okay, I would say. Uh, hockey um, was fairly, it's fairly new to Vanuatu and Solomon Islands because they don't have a turf like, like we do. Um, but um, after watching their first match, that was just, um, it was um, a match where they could get the feel of the turf and, and, you know, work on some techniques and skills that they needed to 
to win their matches and obviously in their second matches they did lift the standard of their game and came back strong to win um, um, Papua New Guinea and, um, and vice versa Solomon Island and Vanuatu so it was a good uh, action um, of hockey over the weekend. But then overall um, I think our, our the Melanesian teams they did okay I, at least PNG the PNG men's team um, scored what two goals against the Australians. Yeah. Um, Vanuatu was able to put up a good fight against the Australians and yeah. so also Solomon Islands. Yeah, it was a very tough match. Uh, the first match wasn't that good with Australia, but then the second match is that Vanuatu, Solomon Island and PNG had with Australia was, was tough because then everyone knew what their weak, weakness was and so that was defended well and, and it was a pretty good match. Yeah, yeah. good. good um, action of hockey over the weekend so anyway it was it was great to see all these four countries um compete to a, to a, a good level and everyone was happy at the end of the day there was the medal ceremony so um yeah really uh thumbs up to those four countries that participated unfortunately at the at last minute we had that fiji and new yeah, zealand wanted to get direct yeah. entry into the youth olympics um, in argentina but yeah they would have to come for the yeah Youth Olympic qualifiers first. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, that was the hockey youth Olympic qualifiers that was held last week. We just saw only four countries, you know, other countries couldn't take part. Yep. But uh, we'll head out for a few short messages and we'll be back with more sports in. Welcome back. Toya Whistle, PNG's top female athlete and the fastest woman in the Pacific, missed out on the 2018 Commonwealth Games due to her actions at the Mini Pacific Games prior to the Commonwealth Games. Her history is that she was discovered at the first PNG Games and mauled to be the best in her game. However, she was faced with some tough challenges in her career along the way that affected her performance. She sat down with Godwin Eki for this exclusive interview. It all started back in 2015. Tribulations followed Whistle's success after the 2015 Pacific Games. Two months later, she faced tragedy when both her father and brother passed away. Soon after, her aunt also passed on. Whistle struggled on and off the track, battling her way through. She says as confident as she looked, what was going on behind the person standing was remorse and mental trauma. Whistle was facing many challenges, attending training sessions and competitions. Being on a sports, uh, spotlight all the time and when you go through, so a, like, you know, with families and uh, individually you go through the problems, nobody knows, but they just judge and say things like that. But it doesn't mean that it's going to affect you for what you're doing. You know yourself and other people judge and talk. So for me, you know, the Commonwealth Games thing, that was a big issue and they said, oh, she's finished her career and, you know, I do, I, I do have supporters and aiders there, but, you know, everything I always turn into positive ways. So that was a big thing for all of my career since from like uh, 2003 to 2018. 2018 was my really bad year, but I should say it's a bad year for me. It was a good experience for me. Missing out on the Commonwealth Games sparked news headlines in the country. A question many had in mind was why the Sprint Queen wasn't part of the Games. But as she explains, the episode has urged her to persevere. Here's why she didn't attend the recent Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast and what went wrong. The reason I wasn't go to the Commonwealth Games is, is based on the mini games last year when I didn't turn of them, turn, turn on to get a medal, medal ceremony, and I walked out. And then when I came back, um, you know, my old coach like, oh, you know, why I wasn't there, and they have to um, wrote a letter to IAAF. So and nothing PNC athletics can do because what they did in the last minute. So um, we can appeal. We did. Ryan Pinney, uh, they're trying to help me, but I was too late. 
my, it's my fault that I didn't go and get a medal. So conscious, conscious, like they have to do something. And I know the rules and the regulations. So, um, and I did mistake. When you, you know, they call you sprint queen, you know, all the time and, you know, expectation is already there. And when you don't give you 100% in, then you like, hang on. But the fact that you need to deal with it. For me, I learned from my mistake that I can't handle the pressure. So I was mentally, I think I weak and I walked away. Having faced all these challenges, she says she is happy to be back in the country and continuing her training. It's not only we can stay in international and training, but everything we need is still back in PNG now. So all the resources we have, the other Pacific Islanders, they don't have that. As she plans to retire, looking back, she says, despite past years when women were dominating the tracks, she is happy to see more young men now coming on board. I should say, you know, life goes on, right? So for me, you know, back in the village girl, like athletics brought me that far. So I want to finish my career in a good way and want to uh, put positive in the young girls, like, so that they can, you know, at the moment they look after me. So I have to finish my career in a good way to finish off and retirement in a good way. So. Toya also spoke highly of the female athletes who have raised the PNG flag at international events and are still doing their bid for athletics in PNG. One of them is Mai Kome who held the 100 meter record at 11.36 seconds set in Brisbane in 2017 before Whistle broke it in one hundredth of a second in 2016, almost 10 years later. With my other friends like, you know, Rafaela Baki, Mai Koime and Sharon Corolla and Betty Brewer, you know, people make their own choices in their lives. We're all not going to be stay together, you know, life goes on. So, I know, I see my Koimes is coming out there and helping, you know, athletes, which is a good thing. And um, Sharon Corolla, she's coming back, uh, helping athletes with Athletics PNG. And um, Rafaela Baki, she's worked with I for Women Center here and helping, and um, you know, life goes on. While speaking about upcoming stars in athletics, Toya said the future looks bright now that PNG has better infrastructure in place. I think with the uh, with the girls, not many but few. Um, we do have young ones. Uh, we got a young girl she's training up in Goroka. Can see potential on her, but we I can see more young females coming up now. So my days, all the all the girls be dominate all the sprints. But after we finish now, I can see more young boys coming up than girls, but only a few girls still around and hang on. So probably after we finish, the new ones coming up, we do have a good um, potential juniors coming up. So this is going to be our first time um, in next month. They're going to one water for the mini games. So. Athletics in future is going to be better and stronger. Wiso, who now resides in Goroka at the National Training Institute, says she will continue to train for 2019 Pacific Games and the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. I, I should say, you know, we all humans, you know, people, they have different opinions. And they can judge, they can say anything they want to, but it's up to you to take, you know, most people they do appreciate what I do for the country and it's a hard work thing it's not an easy job you know it's like you wake up every in the morning go to the office and work every day and for me athletics is it's my life this is something I started and sometimes you know in workplace you do mistakes and you get fired or you know you told by you know tell the boss tell you what you do so for me I know the uh, mistakes and um, that's why the consequences, you know, they suspend me not to the games, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to just give up and, you know, so I turn, in, turn that into positive ways and I can prove people wrong that, like, prove people wrong that I can be better than this too and I'm not going to let um, negative going to put me down.
Yes, and now Godwin Toya Whistle is currently in Japan. Uh, you spoke to her, you know, she was saying stuff that um, she doesn't blame anyone um, for her actions and she, you know, she took it on herself and now she's trying to turn all that into something positive. Yeah, well, it's always good to catch up with Toya Whistle. Um, she, it was a really good conversation. Um, like you said, she's currently in Japan attending the um, Crown Prince Championships um, and um, anyway she like um, she like you said she didn't participate at the recent Commonwealth Games and the whole reason behind not participating at the Commonwealth Games was because at the mini games she um, she came second in the 200 meter sprint and uh, for an elite athlete she says that um, it's not good enough if for a person like her uh, to come second in her game and so she was upset so she had to leave the venue and not attend the medal ceremony um, but overall she took the blame on herself and um, she says there's no one to blame except Taya Whistle so but that's something she uh, said she will work on and and prove everyone wrong that yes Toya is um, still still gonna be on the tracks and representing PNG and doing what she loves. Yeah so she she will be um, getting ready for the upcoming Pacific Games as well? well Pacific Games is uh, the main one, like she said um, on the video, that um, she is the queen of the Pacific when it comes to athletics, um, the track events. Um, so, as we all know, Pacific Games is next year, 2019. Um, next month we have the athletics championship, so that's something she's looking forward to. She's taking everything step by step, event by event, and uh, preparing herself well. She also said that um, now having to be uh, back in the country, um, elite athletes should be um, you know, back in the country training because we now have the facilities to train our athletes. And she's happy staying um, in Goroka at the National Training Institute. And um, yeah, that's where she'll be preparing herself for all the upcoming events. Yes, um, she just took part in her, and uh, now in Japan, she took part in the race and she came third and she'll be, um, she'll be running in the other two events um, later on, probably today or tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, it's a, it's a good start for her for uh, this year, for 2018. This is her first international uh, tournament. So to come third, yeah, at least she's, um, she's there. Um, with the performance, but um, no, she, like she said, one step at a time, and um, yeah, she wants people to to not focus on her, um, you know, negative side of things, like Facebook and every other thing she's saying that so many people are saying things about her, but hey, people work hard to, to represent the country, and she's carrying the flag of PNG, and so we all should be out there cheering for her, and just, you know, be happy, comforting her, and yeah, just be there to support her. Yeah, and we wish um, Taylor Whistle all the best in the in the tournament that she's taking part in right now, and of course the athletics championships. Yeah, and she is, will be in Port Mosby next that month. That is going to be happening, and uh, yeah, we'll just head up for a few short messages, and we'll be back with more sporting. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching Sports Scene. PNG International Tommy Semi is setting a benchmark for young aspiring footballers in PNG with his top scoring form in the New Zealand Football Championships. The star started striker assisted Hamilton Wanderers moved to the top of the Lotto Sport Italia NRFL Division 1 competition with his goal scoring form. New Zealand Division 1 football team Hamilton Wanderers have moved to the top of the competition ladder and it was partly down to a Papua New Guinean star. Tommy Sammy has scored four goals in six games for the league leaders, including a winner in the 2-1 victory over Three Kings last week. The 23-year-old striker, who scored three goals for the PNG men's national team, has hit the ground running in his first season in New Zealand with a number of important goals for his club. Sammy also scored in a 3-2 victory over East Coast Bays and a 3 all draw with Eastern Suburbs. On his debut, he scored in a 4-1 victory over Western Springs and has only failed to find the net twice. His goal-scoring form means Hamilton Wanderers have risen to the top of the table 
after six games with 13 points. Backed by the likes of Alex Frank and youngster Will Stevens, Semi will now be hoping Hamilton Wanderers can win the first title since 1984. The once NSL top scorer has plenty of experience on the bench to guide him in the shape of former Wellington Phoenix and New Zealand national team manager Ricky Herbert, who's managing Hamilton. Semi moved to Hamilton from Malaita Kings, where he was top scorer in Solomon Islands S League with 17 goals. He has previously played for Hikari United and Marist FC in the Solomon Islands. Sammy played for Hamilton Wanderers Summer League side in the New Zealand Premier League this year, finishing as his side's top scorer with seven goals, despite the team finishing bottom of the league with six points all season. And Team Wellington advanced the final of the OFC Champions League on away goals after a thrilling two points to two draw with Auckland City FC. The T-Dubs had their measure against the Navy Blues in the second leg of their semi-final at Kiwitea Street on Sunday, ending the defending champion's run of the seven straight Confederation titles. With the teams locked at Nilol after the first leg in New Zealand capital last weekend, Eric Molloy and Angus Kikoli were the goal-scoring heroes in the first half for Team Wellington, who advanced to their fourth straight OFC Champions League final. It will be their first against someone other than Auckland City. The pressure only built from there and eventually told on the visitors when Scott Hill had turned across into his own net in the seventh minute of what proved to be a frantic ten minutes of additional time. Auckland continued to press for a winner, even throwing goalkeeper Zubi Karai forward for a pair of late corners, but Joseph Figueroa's side did what they needed to reach the final whistle without further damage. Figueroa's side will warn his side to expect a backlash in the second half from the nine-time OFC champions, but commended his team for being able to dig deep and secure a hard-fought result. After a goalless encounter in the first leg, the return affair was a much more open affair, with both goalkeepers called on to keep the scores level. The goal brought an end to Auckland City's remarkable record of 179 minutes without conceding in the OFC Champions League. Sam Hoyson brought down Roy Kayara in the box four minutes shy of half-time. Kikoli gladly obliged to put his side in command at half-time. Auckland City coach managed to inspire his side to far better performance after the break, but needed three goals in the second half proved too high a climb. And Lautoka FC, the Fijian football team, has created its own history in the Oceania region's premier club football championships, the O-League. The Blues will contest its first OFC Champions League final next month after beating Solomon Islands Marist FC 1-0 over the weekend. After tying the first leg of the semi-final 1-0 in Fiji, the pressure was very much on the visiting side to come up with something special in Oceania's most hallowed stadium. Both sides put their best football on display and proved once again they would be tough to separate. Marist largely dominated the first half with numerous shots putting Lautoka's backline under pressure. However, Lautoka's defense held firm with the central pairing of Brian Kaltak and Colinio Sivoki. The common team throughout Marist's foray in the competition has been a need to strengthen in the finishing department and that once again proved to be their downfall, in particular in the first half. For the Fijians, there was no lack of chance either. Although they weren't able to get quite as many clear-cut opportunities as their opponents, in the end all it took was a rare lapse in the Marist defense and an unmarked player to beat goalkeeper Antoni Talo with the first-time hit from directly in front of the goal mount after pouring their hearts and souls into their performance in front of a home crowd of over 12,000. Marist were highly disappointed not to be continuing what has been an exceptional journey for the club. Lautoka will now meet Team Wellington in the home and away final of the OFC Champions League 2018 with the first challenge, a trip to New Zealand's capital on the weekend of 12th and 13th May before welcoming their opponent to Churchill Park for the return leg a week later. And our winners for our Coca-Cola Trivia Round 5, Jonathan and Melissa Angu, their prize was picked up by Melissa at the MTV Lay office. And for a chance to win Coca-Cola merchandise, all you have to do is answer these questions as we count down to this year's FIFA World Cup in July. Question number one, Edson Arantes do Nascimento is a former Brazilian footballer. What name does he popularly go by? And question number two, what position is current Brazilian footballer Neymar playing? Question number three, which two countries have won the World Cup back to back? Now all you have to do is answer these questions on the MTV Facebook page for a chance to go into the draw to win.
You're watching Sports Scene Professional Boxing is up next. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Football Federation PNG's concept of reviving soccer in the rural areas and uniting communities has rapidly gained momentum in the past months. Last week, the Federation supported Garu Football Association in the national capital in hosting a successful four days seven aside tournament that ended on Friday. Here are the highlights. After four days of intense challenge of mates against mates out on the dusty turf of Garamu Sports Field, the initial 19 teams competition saw the best of their men's and women's team contesting the grand final on a hot Friday afternoon. The turnout was just like on a Saturday after a day out at the Bissini football grounds. The men's division, culture was the better side, proving their worth after scoring the only goal of the afternoon and hung on to win the match against Morosent. While in the women's game, DSFA came out victors over Pilasi. Garahu Football Association is one of the established soccer association affiliated under Football Federation of PNG and participates in FFPNG sanctioned events. Uh, the purpose of this tournament now is purposely to select a uh, women's team and a men's team and both uh, we also have emphasis on youths uh, uh, under 17 uh, both boys and girls so that's the purpose of this tournament yeah. through its concept of reviving soccer in the suburban communities ffpng vice president voni capinato said the tournament was a success and appealed to parents and youths to get involved and support the growth of football in their community to me i'm very impressed honestly uh, Every people are talking about Gera who's not safe, Gera who's not safe. This is a venue without a fence. It's just amazing to see that they're behaving, they're very supportive, and seeing a lot of mothers and fathers and children are here supporting their teams. This is really, really exciting to me, and it makes me sit here whole day today to witness the finals. Meanwhile, the proper season kicks off in two weeks' time at the Garahu Secondary School field and will coincide with FFPNG's sanctioned tournaments due to commence next month. We have a lot of job to do. Mosby is a big city. There's a lot of players, a lot of raw talent that never been exposed. I think with this, we'll be good for our football federation and it's good for the country and hopefully one day football will come together and all these talent players will expose into different division in their age group. And PNG Professional Boxing Gym hosted its first ever event for 2018. Yesterday, eight professional fighters took to the ring for a sport in the June international fight against Indonesia. The aim is to host at least two international events in the country before the best fighters can be prepared to fight overseas. From this 2018 event, I have um, selected the best fighters from PNG now. I can see some big changes between the boxes that I developed. I promoted, I developed a lot of boxes they've been outside from the street. I bring them in the boxing ring gym, train them, and now in this event, I can definitely uh, see that I've been doing something and I create a lot of boxes there in the standard now. They meet the requirement from this event. I can see best fighter between um, uh, Jason Ayu and Douglas Wallow, very strong fight. And then I can see um, Johnson Kapus and Junior Raka. Those fighters, are, they, are promote, uh, they are professional in, uh, in their weight categories. So I was working very hard to develop them. There is no gym, no whatever, but I push them around the Port Mosby City to push them, train, and I create them and now I see they can meet the international standard. No gym, no whatever, but I push them around the Port Mosby City to push them, train, and I create them, and now I see they can meet the international standard. Today's do this bout, um, uh, the name of the bout now is Back to Work event. Back to Work means uh, the beginning of the year. We start our event beginning of the year, so on the posters and around, I put Back to Work event. So Back to Work event is like um, those boxes are very strong. They are they are coming in to challenge themselves to we we try to host the international event on June. 
So in June, we have Indonesia coming in. We signed already the contract between Indonesia and Embassy. And we prepare all the boxes with connection. We do everything. The thing now, we are looking forward to our, our sponsors. We need our sponsors to sponsor this event. By next day, we should market our international fighters to the big gym in the world. It's time for a break now. And when we come back, we'll wrap things up right here on Sports Scene. Now the Croton Hella Wigman has partnered with Accelerate Sports to be the official branding and merchandising agent for season 2018. Accelerate Sports, based in Port Mosby, has joined in the support for the Croton Hella Wigman Rugby League team through its Accelerate brand of rugby league custom apparel, training gear, body science supplements and medical first aid supplies. The main reason for Croton Hella Wigman to partner with Accelerate Sports is to lift the standards of their apparel of field training gear, diet and supplements and training equipment. Managing Director of Accelerate Sports, Antoni Tascano, says it has been a pleasure dealing with both the players and the management as they have embraced the professional approach that Accelerate Sports has delivered for them. Hella Wigman Chairman Andy Hetra says Accelerate Sports is a strong brand in PNG and has a good supply chain and hopes to extend this partnership into the future. It's basically a partnership between um, Accelerate uh, brand, the Accelerate Sports store and Hella Wigman uh, Rugby League franchise. Uh, we, as a franchise, we see the need for uh, sports science to be an in important uh, it integral part of the uh, franchise in itself. So. We basically not only uh, uh, are doing the branding of uh, sports uh, apparel, the sports wear, uh, the sports equipment and stuff like that, but we also get in uh, nutrition, uh, diet, um, extra coaching and training and stuff like that from um, uh, Accelerate Sports. So they 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 basically are our partner. Uh, with the Hella Wigman Rugby League franchise. He says Croton Hella Wigman is excited about the relationship and looks forward to becoming the powerhouse in the sport of rugby league competition. For us, we are we, we, we optimistic that uh, we, we, we are going a step further. We are, st we are going a step further than what's normal. So I think what we are doing is not new. It's, a, it, it, it's practiced in the game of rugby league in uh, in, in the world today and we are we seeing that this is a step in the right direction for us to uh, get the level of uh, uh, level of uh, uh, certainty that we want for the uh, for the boys to give out the maximum pe performance on every game that we play not only will the support boost the performance of the players but it is also an advantage over other teams absolutely uh, no doubt you know there, there are certain things that you can't really uh, uh, coach players to do and it requires extra work uh, to be done behind the scene and with the with with with, with the help of uh, the sports science around it uh, we we know that it will pay dividends in in due course and it's an investment in the right direction for us to uh, have not only raw players converted into elite players, but uh, elite players having to pass through a such system. In line with this, it will provide an opportunity for fans to proudly buy and wear the Wigman colors on their sleeves and be part of the greater Wigman sporting family. A range of sporting gears will be made available to supporters of the Croton Hella Wigman for kids right through to the adults. The supporters gear should be hitting the store shelves very soon. Now before we wrap things up, we take a look at some of the upcoming events. Um, first of all, the Hunters, they're on a bye this weekend, so they won't be playing any matches. Um, yeah, the Oceania Swimming Championships. Yeah, but I mean, what do we need to know? What else is happening with Hunters? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, they're, they're on a bye this weekend, so um, we have to find out next week when they, <laughs> yeah, for their round 10 clash. Well, I hope they do well. Um, yeah, we all hope they do well because they're currently 13th which is second last on the <laughs> Cup ladder, so yeah. 
Mm. That's sad. Anyway, moving forward, we have the World Cup starting in June. Uh, hopefully everyone's preparing and gearing up for that because it will be live on MTV. So, yeah, looking forward to uh, yes. watching the games. Looking forward to Football. the FIFA World Cup and also the National Athletics Championships that's happening here in Port Mosby. Yep, kicks off uh, next month, which tomorrow is the 1st of uh, May. So if you're in Port Mosby, head down to St. John Guy Stadium. Toya Wiso will be making her presence on the tracks as well. So, yep. Some of our top athletes as well, apart from Toya Wiso. Uh, apart from Toya Wiso, yeah, we do have some upcoming uh, athletes, the young ones, as well as probably the overseas based uh, athletes athletes will also be here in Port Mosby to attend. And of course, uh, the fun run is also happening in June. Yes. Yeah, the and, 24th and of June. So yes, if you haven't got yourself a Chukai fun run shirt, please get yourself one and uh, you'll see me there, somewhere there. On the 24th of June, we'll all be running together. And uh, I think the sports, SP Sports Awards is also next month. The SP Sports Awards as well is also happening next month, yes. And that's so going to be held... Um, not sure where the, the location is, but it's going to be a pretty busy month um, up ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so looking forward to everything that's going to be happening. Now, that's about it for about it. Sportsing for tonight. If you want to know more about what we've talked about, you can visit our Facebook page or, or want us Go to online. cover any... Um, Sporting events, you can drop by to our office at MTV uh, Garden City Level 2 Baroko and ask for any of the sports reporters and we'll be more than willing to help you out. Um, on behalf of the crew, I'm